right, so today we're going to go through some computer craft. Um, I had a friend of mine reach out and wanted to see some some of the setups of you know power monitors or maybe a button control. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with some basics here, and we're going to set up a power control monitor um, where you'll be able to get uh, a title, a percentage, and a bar that shows how much power is being used. So to look at my initial setup, I am using Draconic Evolutions. Uh, energy core, energy pylon to read the information, um, but you can use any type of device. So if I was to say use a capacitor bank, um, I could read the values from that um, or any other sources of energy storage. So to start off, I'm going to show you kind of how to check a device. So I put this right next to the um, energy pylon. So I could easily check what are the possible computer craft commands that can be used. So if I open up Lua, so within Lua I can then go in here and type in um, peripheral dot get methods, and the device that I'm touching is on the right hand side. So right and bracket and there's our variables. So these are what are being output to computer craft from the peripheral that it's touching on the right hand side. If I did the same thing and say type in bottom, you can see we don't get anything. The, the stone that's underneath of it doesn't have any computer craft outputs. So if I want to actually see what's in those var uh, variables for get energy stored or get max energy stored, I can easily in here set a peripheral or set a variable. So var equals peripheral dot wrap and we're wrapping variable to the right hand side item. So now it contains all of those functions and I can then pull the values from those. So if I type in var dot get energy stored, we can now see the total energy stored within the pylon or within the energy core um, is 27 a lot of zeros, million, um, which I can do the same thing with dot get max and it is case sensitive, and there's a max that we can get stored. So at this point, you can see how I can get my percentage, um, just taking my cur current divided by my max, and then output that as uh, a variable, or not a variable, a percentage, sorry. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that, and we're going to get into writing a punk uh, function. So Lua's basic interface, uh, you can use some Windows type commands, you can use some uh, Unix commands, so if I ls to pull up I can see there's three programs in white that are written. Well I can also do a dir, get the directory, same thing, I can see the three programs written. Well I'm going to go ahead and write one for this uh, video, which is going to be just like those other two on the screen, energy, power, or test, any three of those, but we're going to go ahead and start a new one. So I'm going to do edit and we'll just do percent. We'll call it PERC. So now that I've written that, at any time I can hit control and I can hit save. So now if I go into exit and we list our items, you can see PERC is one of the programs and I can go back in and edit PERC. So the first thing we want to do is when we were over here we set our variables based on the peripheral.wrap the side of the device. Well, in this case, I set it up with wired modems, uh, wired modems and network cable to hook up to the advanced computer. In that case, I don't need the side that the wired modems hooked into. I need the name of the connected device on the wired modem network. So what I mean by that is when you initially hook up a wired modem, you see it's got a red block around it. Well, when you initially have it hooked up, it's gray. Now, if you look down in the text field, the bottom left-hand side of the screen, when I turn it on, you can see Peripheral Draconic RF Storage 0 connected to network. Well, that's what I actually need to wrap in this case. So I'm going to set power variable, um, or the variable power equal to my peripheral dot wrap, and it was Draconic RF Storage 0. And now we just like we did when we did the peripheral dot wrap right. Now it's the same thing. Power is being set to all of the functions, which was the get energy stored and get max energy stored from the draconic uh, 
energy core in this case. All right, so then the next one is we also have a monitor connected, and I just connected it, and you can see it's monitor.0. So I'm going to go ahead and do mon dot not dot equals peripheral dot wrap. And same thing, we had monitor underscore 0. And now we have both of our things written. When we get into this, we're going to be utilizing three, four, five, a few different variables. Um, we're going to go ahead and initialize some of the ones we know we need now. So we need local max power equals zero. We'll set another one for current power. So what is the current usage? And then we'll set another one for the percentage of power. Now we're setting those to zeros, so they'll reinitialize each time. We don't want the variable to pick up from last time it ran. Um, or to not be set back to zero, so if it's incrementing or decrementing, that it's actually going to get the correct values. So the last one we're going to get here is I'm going to go ahead and get what is the max size of our monitor. So if I run, um, and I'll just go ahead and do monitor.getSize, this function right here outputs two variables. It gives me my monitor x, monitor x and our monitor y variables and those are both going to be set when the monitor dot get size function gets executed so now we have our variables set we now need to populate some of our variables so you can actually write the whole program in line you can write it in one while loop so it runs all of the things every time um, but there are a lot of cases where you don't need to constantly rerun functions. Because of that, it's best to always write your functions, um, write your programming into function blocks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start out, and we're going to do our first function, which is to check our power. So check power is going to set our variables for max power, current power, and percentage of power. We can run that as many times as we want. All we have to do is run check power, and it'll then populate each of those variables. So I'm going to do an end to the function, and we're now going to set our variables. So max power is equal to power dot get max energy stored. First variable set. Next one is current power, and that's equal to power dot get energy stored. Last one is our percentage. So percentage of power is equal to, now this is our current power divided by max power, um, times that by 100 to get it as a percentage value. And then we also don't want a lot of decimal places, and we want to go ahead and round up to the next whole number. So to do that, we're going to do a math, math.floor to get the floor base of the number that's being returned from current power divided by max power times 100 and then the last part is plus 0 0.5 to round it up to the next value. So now we have our get rid of those spaces there. Now we have our percentage of power. I can go ahead and save this. Now if I run this um, it's not going to do anything. I'm not telling it to run the functions. I'm not telling it to print anything to the screen. So we're going to go ahead and test that out now. So we're going to edit percentage. I'm going to go down to the bottom. The other main piece of a computer craft program is the while loop. So if you want it to keep writing values to a screen or keep checking the power, then you're going to need to keep looping to output those values and recheck them. So in 99% of the case, you'll have a while true do. Now, while is always going to be true, so it's always going to do, um, unless you specifically tell it to cancel out or error out in certain situations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do check power. So this is going to execute the function. Well, we still haven't written anything to the screen, um, so we're going to go ahead and just do a print and we'll print out current power 
space dot dot. Now we're doing the space dot dot to concatenate different values together. So I'm going to say I want the string value of a forward slash dot dot, and I also want to show max power. So we now have both of those. Um, it's going to print that on, on the screen. At first it's going to check the power, set the variables, and then I'm going to print out current power and max power. Now I also want it to sleep. So I'm going to set sleep to 1, and I'm going to end. So now my while loop is uh, going to run this. Every time it gets to sleep 1, this is actually sleep for 1 tick. So server tick, not 1 second, uh, not 1 minute, it's 1 tick. Now you can set that to 5, depending on how much you want it to output, um, how much code you got being looked up. Um, sometimes I set it to 5, depending on, of course, the usage. Sometimes it can be set to higher. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we're going to run. So you can see now we are getting both the current power and our max power. Now what I was talking about earlier is to being able to terminate. Once you're running something, if you hold down the control and T, it will terminate the function so then you can go back in to edit percent. Alright, so next up is we don't have anything being written to the monitor as of right now. That was all stuff from the previous time um, because we're not actually calling the monitor variable yet. So next we want to go ahead and start a new function. We'll go ahead and call it function write, oh, what am I doing, write mon. Okay, so if in here we want it to set a few things. First, we want to clear the screen. Um, well, if we clear the screen and our background color is set to blue, the whole monitor is going to turn its background color to blue. So we want to make sure that we set our background color, and then we go through and clear the screen so it clears everything to whatever the background color we want it to be. So I'm going to mon.set background color, colors dot black. Next, I'm also going to do, now if you are having a problem and you're not getting any of the pretext, run the function, run the program once first to register that you have monitor set as a peripheral and then it'll pick up everything with inside the monitor peripheral so you can then use um, the values like I'm doing here. Now once I have it set to gray um, where it starts to write it I can push up and down and go through all of the different functions. So I'm going to run monitor.clear and now everything just got set to black. All background items, all spaces on the monitor got set to black. So now I want to move to my first cursor position. Set cursor position 1 comma 1. So 1 comma 1 will actually start me right there. So that is 1 1. In this case this is 27 19. Um, so how do we know that? Well our mon x and our mon y shows if I was to print those values right now it would show that this is 19 by 27. I think it's 19 by 27. And we'll print that out so we can see that in a little bit. So next is I want to go ahead and set my um, initial title for the screen. So we'll just go ahead and for now we'll do a print and we'll write power. And we'll end our function. We'll go down to here. We'll do a write monitor. Save this exit percent and now we cleared off the screen and we're not writing anything well why aren't we writing anything because we're writing it to here because instead of setting it to write the text I did print the text so monitor dot write will actually write it to the connected monitor so there we go you can see here we're at 1 1 and we wrote the text power. So I'm going to terminate this and really where the text is is not best for the usage of well I want it to be right in the center. 
this is going to be my title going across the whole thing. So how do I get it to print right in the middle of the screen? Well, what we'll do for this is we'll come in and we'll write another function. So this function can be used anytime that I want to put in centered text um, within the screen. And again, it's not going to be called every time. It's just going to be called if I'm writing specific text. So it can then be reused for any text. So on all my other functions, you can see these little brackets have been blank. I'm not passing in any variables. Well, in this one, I'm going to do function um, center t, and we'll send in a couple of variables. The text that we want to center, the line to start, um, what is the very first line on x, and then what is our back color, and what is our text color. Oops. So those are the four variables that we're going to send into this function. So now how to use these variables and how to actually set it. So first, we have a background color and we have a text color. Well, we want to be able to set those because we're already sending in this information. So let's go ahead and set mon dot background color and this will equal back color. Next we'll set the mon dot uh, set text color and we'll set this to text color. Um, now we also want to find out what is the length of text. So it could be if I'm using power 5, it could be if I'm using Lord Icon's power monitor, well I don't know the length of that and if I change the title I would have to change my calculations of what is the middle of the screen unless I figure out what is the length of the text, what is the length of the monitor, and kind of what is half of both of those to figure out what is the middle of the screen. So first I'm going to get the length of text and we're going to go ahead and do this as string.len so we're setting a variable length equals string dot length and this will be text. Now like I said we're going to do the difference which is the again we'll get a whole number so math dot floor of monitor x minus length. Okay so now what is our x position? So x is math dot floor diff divided by 2. So the overall difference of the length of the text minus the monitor's x full, which is I think 19, um, and then take that, divide it by 2, and then the last part is to set the cursor for x. m dot set cursor, and it's actually set cursor for both, so our x will be x plus 1, we're going to move it over one value, and our y will be line. So we're sending in the variable line to the function. It's now being used to say this is the line I'm going to print this variable, or the text to. We'll close that, and the last part is to write it. Write, and we're writing text. So we've set everything, we've centered it, we've set the text in the background color, of course whatever is being passed in, and now we're able to start using this function. So up here I had power, and I'm going to hit two dashes to comment that out. I don't want to print out power anymore. I want to use my function for center text. So I'm going to hit center t, 10 center t will be I need to send in text, line, background color, and text color. So my text is, and I'm going to go ahead and set a variable. So we can put this up in the header if we want. Right now I'm just going to set it to right here. We'll call it title equals power. So that means I can set in title. The line number is I wanted to start on line one. The color for, say, the background. I want colors dot light blue, uh, we'll just do gray, and the 
colors for the text, which is going to be colors.blue. So now we're calling the function for center text. We're setting our title, passing that in, and we're saying give it a light gray and blue color, and now we're ready to display that text. So go in here and call percent. Now this is the basic 101 for troubleshooting. You can see we missed a closing bracket. It was expected to close a starting black bracket that was at line 27. Edit percentage, go down to 27. You can see here I've got a starting bracket. I have another starting bracket, and I only have one closing bracket. So we'll close this out, save it, and run. So now we have our centered text. Now, it doesn't look too good. It's centered, but the blue is right up against the gray. So we can either loop a variable to make the whole top line gray, or in the case of making it simple, I could just go into my power variable and set some spaces. So if I was to run this, you'll see, yeah, it cleared up. I don't want to count all of the spaces. Well, I could write a function to do it. Actually, I could write one line to do it and put spaces in the whole thing, but I think I'm going to leave it like this for now. All right, so now we want to draw the bar. So the bar is kind of the, you know, show off the what is the overall percentage. Yes, I can see the values. Um, actually, I can't see the values because I never added it to my title. So we'll go ahead and add that in real quick. Um, so this would be power is equal to, and again, dot, dot, to concatenate. We'll do percentage of power, dot, dot. If you ever get an error, make sure you have a space after your variables and your dot, dots, or else it's going to sometimes try to convert it and uh, give you an error message. And then we'll do percentage full, full, space, space, end, save, exit, percent, and there we go. Power, 59% full. Now, if to see if we're actually pulling the right values, I'm going to throw this here and watch the 59%. It's now 58%, 57% as it fills up the magma crucible. So we ended at 57%. So edit. Wow. Edit. There we go. And now to do the fancy part. It looks fancier. Um, people always like it, which is so to draw something on the screen. So function draw bar. So the bar is pretty much just a whole bunch of spaces all the way across the screen in one color and then up to my percentage of spaces in another color and they'll be overwritten to each other so you can see kind of the bottom percentage if this is the 58 percent it only goes so far over the top bar so how do we want to write this so there's quite a few different ways that you could write this um, I'm just going to do it to output spaces um, but I'm not going to use spaces, I'm going to use the monitor X to get what is the total size, replace the whole thing with space. So what do I mean by that? First, let's go ahead and set a variable that we're going to need, which what is our bar size? This is our bar's percentage value. So we already have percentage, but we want to do the percentage not based on a uh, percentage of 100%, but a percentage of the max monitor size. So bar equals math.floor, should be getting used to that one by now. And we're going to do current power divided by max power times. And we're going to, instead of by 100, we're going to do it by monitor x minus 2. So the overall monitor width, what is the monitor's width minus 2? We don't want the bar to go all the way to the end of the screen. It'll kind of blur into the edges. So we're going to give a little space of black around the edges. And then the last part, which is to make it a, to round it up, plus 0 0.5, and close. So now we have our bar. We want to go ahead and set where do we want our 
var to be. M dot set cursor position, and we're going to set it to 2. And so it starts 2 in. And then for the what line does it start on, we're going to go ahead and set it to from the bottom. We'll make this in relationship to the bottom of the screen. So monitor y um, minus 4. So it'll always be 4 from the bottom of the screen. And we'll close that. The next is we'll set the background color for the first bar. So the first bar we'll go ahead and set it to and see all these M's? None of these are going to work. I don't have it written as both. There we go. On. So monitor dot set background color. And we'll go ahead and make the background color of the bar blue. That's the overall bar, the whole length of the bar. Well, we then need to set what is the percentage that overlays the blue bar. So we'll go ahead and do... Oh, rain. All right, that rain was loud. All right, so we've got our background color set to blue. So the next is we're going to now write out the blue text. So the blue text is spaces, as I was stating. And we're going to do write. Now we don't want to do you know, this and do a whole bunch of spaces because that's kind of useless. We, we want it to be relationship to relational to the overall screen. So we're going to do string dot replace. Replace it with a space for the length of monitor x minus 2. So again, the whole monitor minus 2, it's going to replace everything with a blank space with the background color of blue. So again, we're now filled up a whole bar of blue. If I ran this right now, we would get a blue bar all the way across the back if I didn't miss a line. So on line 40, monitor bar, let's see, 40, 30, 38. That's this one here. Start, start, end, end, save, exit, percent. And am I actually calling bar? I'm not. So if we go down to our while statement, draw bar. Call our percentage, and we have our blue bar. So again, it doesn't show any of the percentage value on it yet. So we're going to have to add that in now. So I can go back in. And at any time, you could do these to say, draw background bar. Well, now we're into the section where we're going to draw the percentage bar. All right, so for the percentage bar, I'm going to do mon dot set cursor position. And our cursor position, again, will be the same um, location as it was before. So we're going to start it off at monitor y minus y minus 4. And then we will also do um, the background color. So monitor dot set background color. And we'll make this one for the power as red. All right, so now we've got our background color. We have our start position. Now we need to write the line itself. So monitor.write. We're going to do the replace with string again to replace it with a blank space. Um, instead of the monitor uh, overall length minus 2 this time, though, we want to use the variable that we've already put together, which is bar, the percentage of the monitor's width based upon the overall power stored. So we've got our bar set, save this, and run percentage. So now you can see we're about 57%. We have our 57%. Put this down here. And if it ticks, 
Well, that moved, but that didn't move. So we're going to check it with some other source. We're going to put this right next to this. Watch our bar. That's not draining. I'll put it next to this. There we go, bars, and it's depleted. So we'll fill it back up real quick. There we go. 77% full. We have a bar on the screen. Um, it is relationship to the screen. It's four from the bottom. That is how to write an energy monitoring program. I'm going to go ahead and paste bin put percentage. It gives you the value right here. I'll put it in the text of the uh, video. To call this, if you're not writing it yourself, if you want to just grab the code, you can always run paste bin get 5xy w57 mb and give it a name like test2. Now I can edit test2 and you'll see this is the function that we just, the very, the program we just wrote. Um, one other critical piece of writing anything with computer craft is don't forget to label your computers. Label set power. Now I can break it, move it, put it back down, and it won't erase the program on it. If you don't label it, if you pick it up, you will lose the program. So just a warning. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll be doing another one over here for doing buttons. Uh, actually, touch screen monitor. So we'll do that one next time. Catch you guys later.